Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss about Ocular Ischemic Syndrome. Ocular Ischemic Syndrome is abbreviated as OIS. It is also known as Venous Stasis Retinopathy. It is an uncommon condition where ocular hypoperfusion occurs as a result of severe carotid artery obstruction. This picture shows the blood supply to the eye. This is the internal carotid artery and as you can see, the ophthalmic artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery. Ocular ischemic syndrome occurs mostly due to atherosclerosis of the carotid artery, either the common carotid artery or the internal carotid artery. It usually occurs in patients in their 60s and 70s with other cardiovascular risk factors. There can be greater than 90% stenosis of ipsilateral carotid system in cases of ocular ischemic syndrome. Sometimes there can be severe bilateral occlusion. Rarely, ocular ischemic syndrome may occur due to trauma dissecting aneurysms or vascular inflammatory disease. Coming to the clinical features of ocular ischemic syndrome, there can be subacute diminution of vision in the affected eye. Occasionally, the diminution of vision will be more abrupt with cherry red spot on frontal examination. There can be amaurosis fugus. There can be light induced amaurosis fugus that is transient visual loss with slow recovery following sudden exposure to bright light. There can be ocular angina that is periorbital dull ache on the affected side. There can be prominent collateral vessels in forehead connecting the external carotid artery on one side to that on the other. Coming to the anterior segment findings, due to anterior ischemia, there can be atrophic changes in iris, poorly reactive pupil, anterior chamber flare, mild anterior chamber cells and keratic precipitates. There can be neovascularization of iris. However, the intraocular pressure will be low due to ciliary body hypoperfusion. This picture shows anterior segment findings in a case of ocular ischemic syndrome. There is corneal edema, conjunctival episcleral injection and rubiosus iridis in the upper border of iris. This picture shows rubiosus iridis in a case of ocular ischemic syndrome. Remember the IOP will be low due to ciliary body hypoperfusion. Now coming to the posterior segment findings. There will be narrowing of retinal arterioles. The retinal veins are dilated but not tortuous in contrast to CRVO. These are fundus images of ocular ischemic syndrome showing narrowing of retinal arterioles and dilated retinal veins. There can be retinal hemorrhages and microaneurysms especially in the mid periphery. This picture shows microaneurysms in a case of ocular ischemic syndrome and this is the corresponding fundus fluorescent angiography image. This picture shows retinal hemorrhages in mid periphery in a case of ocular ischemic syndrome. Again, this picture shows small dot blot mid peripheral retinal hemorrhages. This can occur due to leakage from small retinal vessels that have had ischemic endothelial damage. Other posterior segment findings in ocular ischemic syndrome are cotton wool spots, neovascularization of disc, and neovascularization elsewhere. There can be spontaneous retinal artery pulsations, especially with light digital pressure on lid. Coming to the investigations done for a case of ocular ischemic syndrome, FFA can be done. It will show delayed or patchy choroidal filling, prolonged arteriovenous transit time, retinal vascular staining due to chronic hypoxic damage to endothelial cells, macular leakage or edema with optic disc hyperfluorescence. There can be capillary non-perfusion especially peripherally. These are FFA images showing prolonged retinal and choroidal circulation in a case of ocular ischemic syndrome. Carotid imaging should be done. The various options include duplex ultrasonography, CT or MR angiography. This is normal carotid duplex ultrasonography. These are angiography images showing block in proximal internal carotid artery and internal carotid artery occlusion. This is 3D reconstructed MR angiography in carotid artery disease. ERG when done in a case of ocular ischemic syndrome will show reduced scotopic and photopic response. Coming to the treatment of ocular ischemic syndrome, carotid end arterectomy or stenting can be done. This picture shows carotid end arterectomy and this picture shows carotid artery stenting. This may stabilize or improve the visual acuity. For neovascularization of disc, 
or neovascularization elsewhere and neovascularization of iris, we have to do full pan-retinal photocoagulation. For neovascular glaucoma, we have to do standard medical or surgical treatment. A small note about tachyosis arteritis. It is also known as pulseless disease. It is a rare idiopathic large vessel vasculitis. It affects iota and its primary branches causing narrowing or occlusion. It usually affects women in their 20s and 30s. Because of carotid involvement, there can be ocular hypoperfusion and ocular ischemic syndrome. And because of renal arterial involvement, there can be systemic hypertension and occasionally hypertensive retinopathy. This picture shows fundus image of a case of tachyosis arthritis showing multiple dot blot hemorrhages and microaneurysms along with dilated vessels and soft exudates. This is the corresponding fundus fluorescent angiography image showing marked ischemia of retina and cori. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments section. For more such videos, please check out my playlists. Thank you.